Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to see about carcinoma cervix. This is a concise presentation for medical students. Carcinoma cervix is the second most common malignancy in women after breast carcinoma. They are common in women who do not have a regular screening for CA cervix. It can develop in squamous epithelium that is within the transformation zone or endocervix. Squamous cell carcinomas are common, whereas adenocarcinomas occur only in about 10% of cases. Adenocarcinomas have a bad prognosis when compared to squamous cell carcinomas of cervix. Now let us see about the risk factors for developing CA cervix. Early onset of sexual activity, multiple sexual partners and smoking are the various risk factors for developing CA cervix. Now let us see about the spread of CA cervix. Carcinoma of cervix can metastasize directly to pelvic side walls and can involve ureters, bladder and rectum. They can spread via lymphatics to pelvic nodes. Now let us see about the presentation of a case of CA cervix. The patient can present with abnormal vaginal bleeding which can be postcoital or intermenstrual or postmenopausal. Patients can sometimes present with chronic vaginal discharge which can be purulent or watery or mucoid. Pain is seen in advanced disease. Now let us see about the examination findings in a case of CA cervix. There can be lymphadenopathy. Speculum examination can visualize cervix and can reveal bleeding, irregular or ulcerated growths. Vaginal examination should be done to note parametrial extension. Rectal examination should also be done to note extension to rectum. What are the investigations that are done for a case of CA cervix? Complete blood count, blood urea and serum electrolytes, chest x-ray, CT scan and renal ultrasonography are the various investigations that need to be done for a case of CA cervix. Now let us see about the FIGO staging of CA cervix. Remember. CA cervix is staged clinically. Stage 1 is CA cervix confined to cervix. It is further subdivided into stage 1A and stage 1B. Stage 1A is invasive carcinoma identified only microscopically. It is again further subdivided into stage 1A1 and 1A2. In 1A1, there is invasion of stroma lesser than or equal to 3 mm and lesser than or equal to 7 mm diameter. In 1A2, there is invasion of stroma greater than 3 mm but lesser than or equal to 7 mm diameter. In stage 1B, there is clinically obvious lesions confined to the cervix or preclinical lesions which are greater than stage 1A that is which are greater than 7 mm diameter. It is again further subdivided into 1B1 and 1B2. In 1B1, the clinical lesions are lesser than or equal to 4 cm whereas in 1B2 the clinical lesions are greater than 4 cm. Remember in all these cases the carcinoma is confined to the cervix. In stage 2 the carcinoma extends beyond cervix but not to pelvic side walls. The carcinoma can involve vagina but not the lower third. It is again further subdivided into stage 2A and 2B. In 2A, there is no parametrial involvement, whereas in stage 2B, there is parametrial involvement. Now let us see about stage 3. In stage 3, the carcinoma spreads to pelvic side wall or the lower third of vagina. It includes all cases of hydronephrosis or renal failure secondary to ureteric obstruction. Stage 4 is carcinoma extending beyond true pelvis or carcinoma involving bladder or rectum. Now let us see about the management of a case of CA cervix. Surgery is the treatment of choice. Preoperative assessment includes imaging like CT scan and MRI scan, complete blood count, blood urea, serum electrolytes and liver function tests, cross match, bowel preparation, correction of medical problems, intraoperative antibiotic prophylaxis and anticoagulation prophylaxis. Radical hysterectomy is the procedure of choice. 
it can be done by vertical midline or chernay or maillard incision minimal access surgery can also be done by either laparoscopy or robot assisted we have to assess for ascites we also have to assess liver spleen under surface of diaphragm kidneys ureters omentum and appendix in order to assess the extension of the tumor we have to remove the uterus and cervix plus or minus ovaries and tubes parametria upper third of vagina and pelvic nodes depending on the stage of the tumor radical trachelectomy is a locally radical fertility sparing surgery and it is done in young women with early stage cancer to preserve fertility now let us see about the complications of radical hysterectomy hemorrhage infection and thromboembolus are the major complications of radical hysterectomy infections can include urinary tract infections pulmonary infections and wound infection other complications include pelvic hematoma small bowel obstruction pelvic lymphocyst formation and ureteric or vesicovaginal fistula now let us see about radiotherapy in the treatment of ca cervix radiotherapy is indicated for stage 2b or greater than that and in those patients who are unfit for surgery it can also be used as adjuvant therapy when nodes are positive the dose of radiotherapy is 60 gray over 6 weeks the complications of radiotherapy includes proctitis ileitis with diarrhea and skin reactions late complications of radiotherapy includes bladder irritability and fistulae formation chemo radiation is cisplatin based chemotherapy plus radiation therapy it is recently recommended for ca cervix with stage greater than or equal to 1b2 now let us see about treatment of early stage cervical cancer for stage 1a if the lesions are less than 1 mm cone biopsy or simple hysterectomy should be done if the lesion is between 1 to 3 mm simple hysterectomy should be done if the lesion is greater than 3 mm radical hysterectomy should be done and adjuvant radiotherapy should be given if the nodes are positive for stage 1b and 2a radical hysterectomy and radiotherapy should be given radiotherapy is preferred if the patient is unfit for surgery or it is used as an adjuvant to surgery if the nodes are positive adjuvant chemo radiotherapy is given if the stage is greater than or equal to 1b2 for stage 2b radiotherapy is the treatment of choice now let us see about follow up of treated cases a routine post op check should be done at 6 weeks the patient should be reviewed 3 monthly for 2 years 6 monthly until year 5 and annually until year 10 the following things should be done general examination including breast examination lymph node examination abdominal examination vault smear vaginal and rectal examination in some cases chest x ray colposcopy and biopsy should also be done if you have any suggestions please let me know in the comment section for more such videos please check out my gynecology playlist thank you